my name is Susan Allen. I'm here from Susan Allen Financial. And today I'm with Mary Ann Marzano from UBU Hair Design. And also I'm here with Diane Bevan from Arbonne International. Hi. And you know what? I wanted to ask you, Mary Ann, when women come to you to um, start doing their hair and getting a haircut, where do you start? Like, what's the process to decide on what's best for them? Well, first, I, I just try to get a sense of who they are as mm -hmm. a person um, and just start asking questions like, how much time do you want to put in your hair? Some people okay. want to spend a lot of time blow drying using um, tools like flat irons or curling irons or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are there casual wash and wear? So I just get a sense of that. And then I analyze their face shape, their hair type. And, you know, to see what they want mm -hmm. and see if what they want goes with what's going to look good on them. If they want something good, then we move forward. If not, I start explaining what I feel would be a better fit for them. Now, does that happen often where people come in with a picture that's totally inappropriate for <laughs> their... I was just their, thinking that. <laughs> their yeah. face shape and their hair type. Is that a consideration too, the hair type? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I don't say it happens a lot, but yes, it happens. They come mm -hmm. in and say, this is what I would like. And so I'll explain to them that this hair model, whether they have thicker hair or coarser mm -hmm. or a finer, you know, or again, take it, their face shape. You know, so I might uh, just point that out and say, I could cut your hair like this, but this is how it's going to be different. Okay. Because their hair is coarse and your hair is fine. All right. And um, where should someone start as far as if they want to decide for their shape of their face? What's, what styles are best for like a round face? Okay. Are there different styles that coordinate with that better? Well, first of all, everybody's face is beautiful and perfect. <laughs> you know, it really is. You have to just accept yourself. Mm -hmm. And so whether you have a square face or a long, thin face, it's okay because we have beautiful people across the whole spectrum. But you want to bring your face to an oval. Okay. So you want to think about that. So you want to look at the into the mirror and decide. Now hold your face back and see, are you wide across the forehead and wide across the jawline mm -hmm. so that you're square or, like I said, long, narrow. And so let's just take a long and narrow face. We want to stay away then from something like your hair's parted down the middle and straight and long because we're going to okay. accentuate that. So if your face is narrow, we might want some side swept or a fuller bang and some curls and fullness in the side so then it brings the face out. Um, if your face is square, again, side swept bangs are actually great for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. it, just, um, it just brings, it just cuts the forehead in half a little bit, kind of offsets the face, and then um, you bring, the hair will be smoother on the side because mm -hmm. of taking in from the wideness and coming down around the jaw. So, you br again, keep bringing it back to oval. Okay. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. And I also think that with the side swept bangs, like, this problem is averted from oh. always having to, you know, put your hands in front of your face and move your hair behind. And what about hair texture? Are there any, um, you know, is it better if you have shorter hair with curly, or, or does that make a difference? Um, that's hard to say because... All texture can work in a lot of ways. Okay. Sometimes, say, really fine hair is better shorter because mm -hmm. the longer it gets, it, you know, it gets a little uh, fly away. Curly hair, like mine, sometimes is better short. But if you have the right face type, you can get away with something longer. And, of course, young people, well, they can get away with everything. <laughs> so when I'm talking about 30s or 40s and above, you know, you might want to start thinking about it more. So, um. A lot of times, it's about the waviness, but again, today's, it's all about the product, too. Mm -hmm. So it's different. Um, you know, really curly hair can be tamed with a lot of the anti-frizz smoothing products, mm -hmm. or the finer hair can be fluffed up with a lot of the bodifiers that are out there. Okay. So we can, with the, all the product, great products out there. You can make it happen. You can make it happen. Okay, great. Usually. <laughs> so. so, Diane, um, the same question would go to you. So if somebody was uh, starting out, they wanted to start using makeup, mm -hmm. so how would you go through that process with them? Well, if somebody is starting off doing makeup, chances are that 
they don't wear any makeup. Mm -hmm. So rather than scare them off, I would just incorporate just a couple of things to make it really simple. And even if you're, someone is not going to do anything, I would recommend just maybe like a tinted lip gloss, um, an eye, you know, something as simple as an eyelash curler, um, just to make the eye look a little bit more open, one quick coat of light mascara, and you can even take your lip gloss and if it's a pink shade or a rosy shade, just even take a little bit of it in the tips of your fingers and, and tap it on your cheeks just to have, you know, a little fresh pull together look. Mm -hmm. That's, I would start there. Okay, now what if you're somebody that's been using makeup for a little while? Um, mm -hmm. It's important to start with some sort of a base, right? So you have to start maybe with a moisturizer, a good moisturizer? Well, it, it depends on the type of skin. I mean, everybody should use a good moisturizer, everybody. Oh. Whether skin is, somebody feels that their skin is dry or oily, that everybody should use a, a good moisturizer. Mm -hmm. And of course, the drier we are, the, the more moisturizing we're, of a um, base we're going to use. Um, even for acne, someone who has acne, they should be using a light moisturizer to help balance out the skin because our oil glands are really smart. Um, mm -hmm. the, the younger skin especially, that when they use products to remove all the oil from their skin to, because they're afraid of the acne that they have, that the oil glands will overproduce and it adds to, it comp compounds the, the acne problem. So if they would just use like a light moisturizer with that acne, an oil-free one, it just gives a nicer palette in which just to start any makeup foundation. Okay, and then uh, you said that magic word, foundation. So mm. if I'm heading over to the Walgreens and I want to pick up a foundation, you have any good tips on how to find the right match? Well, if you're going to a, a drugstore, it's difficult because you're stuck with, you know, having to trust that it's the right color mm -hmm. or that you look like the girl in the box, which nine and a half out of ten times... <laughs> you know, they've got the perfect lighting, um, mm -hmm. you know, they got, you know, they're 19 years old and, you know, it's really difficult to tell. The most, the best way to, to choose a foundation and make a product is to be able to test it and, and to get an accurate color. And it depends on where you want to go. If you just, if you don't want to look like you wear makeup and you just want um, some sheer coverage, I would recommend a tinted moisturizer. If you want a little bit more coverage, I would go with um, like a, you know, a, a heavier foundation. Not to look heavy, but to get more coverage. You never want to look makeup-y, but if mm -hmm. you want more coverage, I would go with more of a foundation. So if you're um, working with, if you go to St. Macy's and you go to the cosmetic counters, mm -hmm. they have artists there, or you go to a privately owned business that does makeup artistry, mm -hmm. how do they um, match that color? Is, is this something where you wipe it on your wrist or? Well, what I like to do is a lot of places will use the wrist, but there's no, none, sun hasn't gotten there, so it's not our face. Mm -hmm. So I like to test it where I'm going to wear it. Okay. So I like to do it on the side of the cheek and then blend it into the neck. And if it completely goes away, it's a match. The one that disappears is a match. Okay, that sounds good. Now yeah. what about eyeshadow? Do you have any tips on finding good colors for your eyeshadow, for your skin type or your um, skin coloring, not your type, your skin coloring? I like to play off of the eyes because everybody, not everybody, but most people want to keep the focus up and they want mm -hmm. to keep the focus on their eyes because mm -hmm. the eyes really are the window to the soul. So when you're talking to somebody, when you shake someone's hand, you're always looking directly in the eyes. So I like to work off of what people naturally have, as I'm sure you probably do with, uh -huh. with hair. It sounds like you're doing the same things. Um, is work off of the natural eye color. And if, I mean, you both look, you look a little bit bluer, you look a little bit greener, maybe. Today, probably, yeah. yeah. I might see, the problem with me is that my color actually changes. I can tell because it looks like around your iris, okay, is a circle of color. And you have to get really close to the mirror to look. But you've got warmer tones. You look like you have a gold ring around your iris. 
and you that look, means I'm special. <laughs> and you look like you have maybe like a blue ring around your iris, so, and you're cooler. Mm -hmm. So cool. I would go, I would definitely go with a warmer tone with you, with you being in the golder side, I would do something maybe like a dark, dark green, you know, and it wouldn't look as harsh as it would on you because it's okay. flattering to your eye tone. Hmm. So now, I go with that as opposed to matching the skin or matching the outfit. Okay. Are there any rules as far as if you have a certain eye color, you should definitely never use I a don't like issue. rules. Okay. Good. I believe in <laughs> rules. Me I, I, I like her. That. <laughs> I believe in rule breaking. Okay. And it's like whatever the trends are or whatever mm -hmm. area of makeup that you're comfortable with, you know, you can always modernize it just a smidge um, and you can make it fit for you a okay. little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the questions that I have is, what's the difference between blush and bronzer? Can and can you use both at the same time, or is that a big taboo? Again, back to rule breaking. Break them. You know, there there's no there's no set rules. I like to use um, a bronzer maybe all over quickly if I'm not going to do anything. But if I'm doing more of a made up look, what I like to do is a little bit of bronze to keep it again really natural looking, but do a little bit of bronzer on the cheek, forehead, nose, and then take, you know, your pinker shade or whatever shade of blush that works best for you. And then just to put that just on the apples of your cheeks on top of the bronzer. And it really hmm. does a pop and it's it's nice. It just keeps it, you know, like we're a little we've got a little bit of wind burn outside. You know, it's nice. Okay. Marianne, I wanted to ask you, as far as hairspray, first of all, do people still use hairspray? And what are the uses? Can it control your hair as far as humidity? And you know in the winter you get the static cling. Will mm -hmm. it help with that, or what will help with that? Sure. Well, static cling um, conditioning is good. So very light, like if you have fine hair, mm -hmm. you might want to just get a very light detangler. Okay. And um, again, you have to sometimes experiment with products, but you can ask your hairstylist and they should be able to recommend that. So that should help with static cling. Okay. Um, hairspray, yes, people still use hairspray. Mm -hmm. And there's different levels of hairspray. There's what you call a working hairspray, mm -hmm. and that's a very light hairspray. And then the medium hold, and then you have your heavy finish. That's if you have your hair just right and you don't want it to move and shh, okay. that kind of thing. But um, hairspray, say your hair is fine, you don't want so much, you can just put a light mist on top of your hair, mm -hmm. and that'll smooth down some of those fuzzies. You could even even just run your hand a little bit over your hair, over your hair after you spray it. Okay. But if you want a little volume, sometimes you want to keep it away from the ends of your hair because it's going to make it a little heavy and pull it down. Okay. So you could separate your hair, pull it up, and spray the hairspray underneath Ooh, okay. here mm -hmm. and drop it. Another great thing is, um, say, you wear your hair smooth, but you might be going out to using a big curling iron. Mm -hmm. Spray a light mist of that working hairspray, and then use your curling iron. Okay. And that'll kind of give it a little, Make very it little, yes. no, not a lot, and that'll give it a little zing so that you, you'll keep those waves longer. Mm -hmm. But using the hairspray at the roots underneath will kind of give you that little bit of a lift mm -hmm. and, and help you keep that lift rather than just spraying it on top to hold it down. Does that okay. answer? Yeah, that helps a lot. I and with, oh, just one other thing, if you, because now the waves are in, another thing you can do, like say you have a little bit of a wave to your hair, you've scrunched it a little bit while you're blowing it dry, so as it's drying, you can hold your hair to the side, you know, you kind of wave it out, spray the hairspray in, and as the hairspray's drying, you grab it and scrunch it, mm -hmm. and then let go, that scrunching that hairspray as it dries will press in those waves. Okay. So that's another way you can use it too. So you want, you know, you can work it. So, you know, a lot of times we do a lot of hanging or mm -hmm. rather than being, you know, right, even right. hanging your head upside down mm -hmm. and spraying underneath will give you some, a little bit of fullness, especially somebody like hair like you. So what if you're out and about and you have that really bad mm -hmm. static? Is, is there oh. a way to get rid of that? Sure, sometimes it's as easy as if you have a little hand cream or something and you put some hand cream, again, not a lot, but just a little hand cream on your hair and then just kind of run it over your end. So you, could, you might be at a store, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, tester, oh, yes, test it, you know. <laughs>
Okay. Just a little, you know, the finer the less mm -hmm. you want to use. But yeah, that's a great little kind of tip. Great, thank you. And one other little tip, just because I know you mm. won't even think to ask this, is the temperature of the water when you're washing your hair. Oh, okay. Uh-oh, I don't think I'm going to want to hear this No, one. you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll probably agree with this, that hot water, really hot water is bad for your skin and hair. Mm. Okay. But when your hair is fine, hot water is pretty good in that it, it opens a cuticle. So hot water opens a cuticle, cold water closes a cuticle. Mm -hmm. And so curly hair, the curlier your hair, the colder rinse you should use. Oh, and okay. so, you know, lukewarm sure is great. And um, in the middle, cold hair, a cold water also adds shine to your hair. So, because again, it's flattening out the cuticle. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so say somebody is struggling with really frizzy curly hair, um, I tell them, and of course it's winter time, you don't want to stand under a cold shower. I tell them, take your shower, wash your hair, put the conditioner in, but don't rinse it out in the shower. And then whether you have a handheld or go to the sink, it's really worth the two extra minutes to rinse your hair with that really cold water. Mm -hmm. Because it just tightens up that cuticle and it removes a lot of frizz. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, okay. then put the towel around it and just blot it. You know, we don't want to... It's okay to do this when you have fine hair and you're trying to get some volume, although that's, it's causing some friction. But if you have curly, wavy hair, any frizz at all, any, you, know, you don't want to be doing this because now you're just frizzing it up. You want to just put the towel around it and blot okay. and be very gentle with it. And I've also heard with um, wet hair, you shouldn't use a brush. Is that true or just a comb or does it make a difference? Mm -hmm. Yes and no, a, a comb is better because you don't want to cause breakage, but now there's several wet brushes coming out. And mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about those wet brushes, but they're miraculous. If you have kids or teenagers with long, tangly hair, you know, fine hair gets very tangly, mm -hmm. um, go to your stylist. They are becoming very popular now. They're called a wet brush, and they are, like I said, miraculous. You could actually just comb through that. So... And what are the trends with color, hair color? Well, you know, they have they call the ombre with the kids with the lighter at the bottom. That's yeah. a lot of fun. But it's really natural, you know, kind mm -hmm. of like that chunky blonde. Well, I can't really say what's trendy because, again, it's so normal. You can get somebody now that can look great. You know, they'll have... Um, they put the um, extensions in maybe with the mm -hmm. color so they have the mm -hmm. pink streak or that. So you can have a lot of fun... Uh, going to a party or something with that and um, but it's really just in the average work day mm -hmm. really just natural you know just um, soft highlights okay. um, more for shine and, and how she uh, Diane was talking about coloring you do want to a little bit look think about whether you're a cool or a warm person and to have your hair mm -hmm. just kind of match that and as you age you don't want to go too dark Okay. That's why I'm trying to get some highlights in my hair. All right, I'll remember to, that, yes. yes. Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to have a problem. But, <laughs> you know, even if, you know, I'm naturally a very dark person, but now mm -hmm. that I'm getting up there, I'm trying to tone down the darkness, you know, with a little bit of um, softer, the caramel highlights to mm -hmm. take away from the harshness. So that actually leads to a question that I've been dying to ask, which is my mother in law has some <laughs> notion that. The older you get, the shorter your hair should be. Can you talk about that? Okay. Well, again, going back to Diana and her breaking her rules, it really depends on your overall look. Mm -hmm. And some people, I would say, say a, a rule would be gray hair, long gray hair on a long, you know, absolutely not. And I was out one time, and I saw this very attractive woman. I don't know how old she was, maybe late 50s. She had beautiful silver hair. It was smooth and long. And she had this kind of chic, um, casual look about her. Chic, sporty, I'd call it. She looked fabulous, even mm. though that's a total rule breaker. But there's something about her face and her beautiful mm. silver hair, and it was smooth and well-kept. So it really is about how you look and how you're going to wear your hair. As you age, you just do want to make sure that it's whatever you're doing is neat. You know, because you're, when you're young, you can be a little messy, you know. So if you do are going to have long hair, 
you know, maybe you want some layers around your face to frame it or something. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's not dragging you down. So the rule would be that, shorter hair for older women. But again, look at your overall look and, and neatness and framing of your face. Okay. And what about um, coloring? Is coloring bad for your hair? I've heard pros and cons. Yeah. yeah. Technically, it, it damages your hair. Yes. Okay. It, it, but going back to fine hair now, you want to damage your hair. Okay. I have people that get highlights just to give them some volume oh, and control oh, over right. your hair. Mm -hmm. I've heard that Because I think, yep. oh, oh, now I'm forgetting my schooling, I think it's a 30% increase of volume of hair. I forget what it is, but mm -hmm. you actually get an increase. So, but again, back to the products, fabulous colors and conditioners now. Unless you're really killing your hair with color, you can bring back your hair to shine and health oh, great. with coloring okay, it. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. And you know what I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. Diane, as far as um, under eye circles, what's the best way to conceal those so it's not, you know, shining bright that you have <laughs> or a different color under there? Or is there a way to well, conceal yes, there, those somewhat? Yes, there is a way. And I believe in you can't look really good on the outside without taking care of the inside. Mm -hmm. So I'm a so true believer in lots and lots of water. Okay. So lots of water will definitely help darkness. It'll help puffiness under the eye. Um, secondary to that, a nice eye cream mm -hmm. and you can use your moisturizer for your entire face by your eye but it's generally too heavy oh, so the okay. skin underneath our eye and around just within an inch around our eye is the most delicate skin on our body mm -hmm. so it doesn't need the drenching of the moisture that the rest of our face does so if we use just a you know use a nice eye cream mm -hmm. and just tap it on not bring it too close to the eye because the heat of the body draws in the the moisture in the lotion so you don't want to get it in your eye you just want to kind of tap it around your eye and then with your concealer I would go one shade lighter than your your foundation okay to where it's just a little bit brighter and most women do the raccoon thing Mm -hmm. with the with the concealer and it doesn't need to be I'm gonna pop my glasses off for this it doesn't have to be all the way around your eye but the darkest part of our eye is generally right here in the corner okay. and then right here underneath so just make sure you tuck it in there and underneath here and not so much out here because this will bring brightness in here okay. and you don't want to drag it all the way out there and what about should you remove your eye makeup completely every you know, you hear that never, ever go to bed with your makeup on. That's a rule. <laughs> okay. That's that a rule. That is a rule. So that's a rule. That's a rule. That one, I don't never break. break. <laughs> I do not break that rule. I think there have been maybe five times in my whole life okay. where I've gone to bed with my makeup on. All right. And absolutely, because, you know, we wear our different lotions on our face to moisturize and, and protect during the day, mm -hmm. but nighttime with our hair and our skin is all about... Um, taking care of it and nourishing it and re, re, getting it to be where it can be more vibrant. Mm -hmm. So you can't do all that moisturizing unless you have all the makeup off. Okay. And how do you know if you got it all off? I, like, um, there's certain brands at the store that sell the um, towelettes. Mm. Are those any good? Well, I don't, uh, there's so many companies out there, and I don't know about all of them, so I can't really say. And the only thing that I don't, I like the theory because it's quick and easy, mm -hmm. but I know that so many of them are so chemically laden oh, right. that anything that we yeah. put on our that. skin, on our scalp, in our mouth, brushing our teeth, on our lips, it's all absorbed into our bloodstream in 26 seconds. Wow. So within less than a minute, anything that you put on your body anywhere because mm -hmm. our whole body is so porous mm -hmm. is in every major organ in your body in less than a minute wow. so it's very important to use products that don't have your toxin chemicals in it mm -hmm. so I personally mm -hmm. I would go for a quick easy um, eye makeup remover and just rub my eyelashes together you know put a little bit on my fingers rub the eyelashes together soften it and then go ahead and take it off but I don't wear more waterproof mascara, and I don't mm -hmm. wear any waterproof makeup. So mm -hmm. all of my makeup comes off with my cleanser. 
Oh, okay. Which is nice. Okay. Yeah, so it's all water soluble. Right. Diane, I wanted to ask you, are there any tips you can give us if we're going to a special event, a party, tips to shine with our makeup? So do you mean going from day to night? Yes. Or even yes. just like to dinner after work? Exactly. To look, you know, a little bit different than the kind of the natural the daytime office. look. The office, right. sure. Um, what I would do is I would um, use an eyeliner mm -hmm. and maybe just do, line the top of your eyes, depending upon the shape. Um, maybe put a heavier eyeliner on mm -hmm. or bring your um, eyeshadow with you that you have on during the day. And most powder eyeshadows can be applied as a liner. They're wet to dry. So just bring a, a pencil, I mean um, an eye lining brush mm -hmm. and just dab it in a little bit of water. Use the darker color and just line maybe the top of your eyes. Okay. And then I've got something here that's a, um, it's a cream highlighter. And you can take this and put it on your cheekbones. And it just will bring just a nice shine, nice okay. shimmer. So you can do that. And then um, maybe if you're wearing just a lip gloss during the day, maybe a pop of red or just something a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of eyeliner, um, a little bit of shine on the cheeks, and then maybe a deeper shade of a lip gloss. Oh, I like that. And just yeah, bam, just, and you just two like seconds in the bathroom bit. mirror, and you're done. And Miriam, what about yourself? What about changing our hairstyle just to you know, make it a little bit more exciting for the evening or a party? Sure. Well, of course, long hair can very easily be twisted up into something and putting a barrette and just twisting it in the back. Um, if you have shorter hair or any kind of bangs, they have a lot of different um, hair creams or they call them either pomades or waxes, something light, that you could go around your edges and so you get kind of like that pointy look. And so, like I said, the bangs or any layers on the side, so you're framing your face a little bit more. And um, and when I was talking about before about your hair with being straighter, maybe mm -hmm. you'd like to just have a one of those big curling irons just to um, put, just put a little wave in or, or something just a little different like that. But the hair products are big. Mm -hmm. The hair product today's style is a lot about the product. Okay. So you know, a lot of times you get um, you know, say you see that those PC bangs or the framing around the face or the or the ends that are pointy but flat and not pointy but not looking damaged, you know, flat. That's a lot, a lot of those creams or waxes just to smooth around the edges to uh, just give it that little pizzazz mm -hmm. rather than the dry mm -hmm. look. Okay, well, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you for having me. us. And if you'd like to find out more about our guests and also about WBOA, please visit us online at WBOA.org. Hope to see you soon.